Hey everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. Before we get started, be sure to check out the exclusive Facebook group listed down below. I would love to have you guys join me over there. We have a lot of fun. It's a great place to show off your crafts, ask your questions, and get to know other crafters. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your very own swatch rings. Now these are super helpful, especially when you are love running low on a color or you need a specific color for some sort of design. What these are is they're going to show you every color for the different brands of vinyl. You can do these with HTV as well. They're really, really helpful and super easy to make when you know how. So let's get started. I'm going to show you guys how to make your very own swatch rings. Whatever we would do, we do it just for I'm gonna show you guys how to make a swatch ring. It's really easy and it's super helpful to have these swatch rings to know which colors you need to order. So the first thing that we're gonna use are some shapes and you can do this completely without having design space access. So what we're gonna do is click on shape and you can make your swatch ring any shape that you want. The hearts actually are really cute but for today I'm gonna to use this rounded corner rectangle Go ahead and select that and it will open up a rectangle for you with those rounded corners. Now you can make this as large or as small as you desire to. Um, I found about a little over an inch was pretty good. I think mine was like an inch and maybe a quarter. So let's just go 1.3 inches. I think that's going to be a pretty decent size for these. And you can always kind of unlock this and play around with the sizing, you know, however you want to do it. It's really up to you and how big you want your swatch ring to be. But this is a pretty good size. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just because it does look really small, but I promise it's not. It's actually pretty decent size. So once you kind of are happy with the sizing of your design, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to duplicate this because we're going to use one of these to make a label. Now I want my label to be smaller than my actual uh, rectangle here. So what I'm going to do is just keep the same rectangle and I'm just going to reduce the size and you want to make sure you leave room for the hole for your swatch ring. So that looks like a decent size for our label. I'm going to put that over to the side. The next thing I'm going to do is add my little circle to my ring piece. So I'm just going to open shapes and just grab a circle. This is super duper easy so you shouldn't have any problems doing this. This is a really easy task. Make your circle pretty small. You don't want it to take up a ton of space on your swatch ring, but you also don't want it like right in the corner because that's gonna weaken the edges of your ring. So I like to put mine a little bit more down and in. And then I just like to check and make sure that my label won't sit over my um, little hole. So just for visuals, let's make this a different color. Let's make this light gray. So this will be our label. This goes on the back. And then this is the dark gray is what it's going to cut out. Now we need to make sure that this circle cuts out. So you can do this one of two ways. You can either select the entire design and just simply attach it. That will allow it to cut out the circle. Or if you don't want to attach and you actually just want to slice out the circle, you can do that too. What I'm going to do is select my rectangle here and then and the circle. And down at the bottom, just simply click slice. That's going to remove the circle from the rectangle. Now it might take a second. It can be a little bit slow. Go ahead and delete these two circles. You can either grab them over here or you can do it over in the layers panel. Just select them and hit delete on your keyboard. Now you're ready to cut out. This is the shape that you'll use for your vinyl. And this is going to be your label. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to play around with these labels. So the way that I did it so that I could fit as many as I could on a sheet, because I'm going to do print and cut for these, is what we'll do is we're going to use another shape. So what you'll do is take your shapes and this time just open a regular square. Now this again takes a second to load, but once you have your square, what you're going to do is do you see this little unlock down here in this lower left hand corner? You can either click the unlock here or there's also one here between the sizing between the width and the height. Now I'm going to make this 6.75 by 9.25, which is the largest that we can do our print and cut. Now it is not going to fit on our screen right now because we're pretty zoomed in. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so that we can see the entire square here. The next thing that I need to do is right click on this and click send to back. 
I want to make sure that this rectangle is over that design. Now I will say this does look a little bit small. So I'm not really happy with the sizing that I have here, so I'm going to change things a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take my rectangle, put it with my square or my other rectangle. So your label rectangle and your vinyl rectangle. I'm actually going to make them a little bit bigger. I feel like I made that a little small. And for this purpose, let's just make them a little bigger so that you guys can really see. You can make them whatever size you want. Now your label will be bigger and probably easier to put your wording on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it pretty close to the edge. I don't want to go all the way to the edge, but pretty close to the edge. And then I'm going to hit duplicate. I'm just going to like lay these out and I'm not going to do anything fancy right this second. I'll show you guys why. Because what we're going to do is fit as many labels on one sheet of printable sticker paper as we possibly can. And again, you can make as many as you need to make for however many colors you're going to do. So once I have one single row of labels, which I can fit five across, I'm going to select all of this light gray labels. I'm going to go to my align tool. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to align the tops of them. The next thing I'm going to do is click align and I want to distribute them horizontally and that's going to distribute them evenly horizontally. Then what I'm going to do is attach them. The next thing that I'm going to do is change them all to white. That way nothing prints for a background color on these and we don't have to worry about that. The next thing that I'm going to do is click duplicate. Now this can take a few seconds. And what I'm going to do is again, line them all up and I'm just going to fill in this entire sheet, the square right here with all of these little boxes. Now this can take a minute and you just kind of eyeball lining them up. It doesn't really matter how well lined up they are, but you definitely just line them up best you can. And we can fit a lot on these sheets, which is great. You won't take a lot of sticker paper to make your labels. And it's really, really simple to just fill in your page with all of your stickers. And then I'm going to show you guys how to put the text on them. So I'm just going to make up some colors because I've already made mine. But you'll want to look and make sure you have the right colors with your vinyl. Now, I don't know if I can fit another line, but let's see. We might be able to. Might be a tight squeeze, but I think it might fit. It looks like it's going to fit just fine. So I'm going to now go back down here and I'm going to find this big square that we used. I'm going to use the eyeball and I'm going to hide it. The next thing that I'm going to do is select all of my squares and I'm going to attach everything together. That way, when I go to move things, this all moves as one. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to click the word duplicate. It's going to give me a second set of these. That way I have an extra set just sitting off to the side. That way, if, in case I need to make more, I have that option. So the next thing that we're going to do is add our text to our labels. Simply go to the text tool and I'm just going to make a label for white HD. Now I like to have all of mine in capital letters. It's really up to you and how you want to label yours and the design that you want. I like to center my text. And then I usually change my font. Now for this, you want to use something that's pretty easy to read. So I would just play around with fonts and see which one you like best for readability. It's really important that you're able to see these and they're kind of small. So you just want to find something that's going to work really well for what you want to do. So I'm just sort of playing with some of like these bigger fonts, something that's a little bit more blocky. I think this one's actually not too bad. Now the, the, Line spacing is really, really bad on this. It's a little too much. So I'm going to go up to where it says line space right next to letter space. And I'm going to change it to like negative five and see what that does. I probably can actually go up to like seven or eight even, maybe even nine. But the letter spacing is going to give, or the line spacing is going to give you a little bit more space to fit these into your labels. Now again, you can play with the sizing however you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce my size. And you're probably going to need to change sizing depending on the name of your um, vinyl. So just keep that in mind. Like white is a pretty short little word. But if you're going into something like imperial blue or carnation pink, things like that, you'll need to kind of change the sizing. But it's fine. So sometimes if that looks like a little bit too big of lettering, 
especially if I'm going to make really, really big labels, I'm going to go ahead and just change it. So you can really play around. There's Cricut fonts that you can use. You can use your system fonts. You can use anything that you want to make these. So I actually really liked this one. I think this is the one I ended up using is Agency FB. You should have this on your computer already. So once that's done, what I like to do, and I'm going to actually move this down just a little bit because it keeps getting messed up by the font thing. Um, what I'm going to do is under operation where it says basic cut, I'm going to change this to print and cut standard. And you see how much thinner it looks now? So it's a little bit easier to envision what it will look like when you choose the color that you're going to do. So next thing I'm going to do is duplicate this a couple of times. That way I can have the font all set, the letter spacings all set, everything is done. To change the wording, just double click on it and change the name. Now you're going to have to change them all back to print and cut, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. It's really easy to do it this way. You could also write the labels if you wanted to, but you don't have to. So I'm going to show you kind of what it looks like because you see I did black. I didn't do that one fully. Um, capitals, which I, like I said, I just find it easier to read. So I'm just going to do a few here and I'm just going to do, let's do, so let's say we have carnation pink. What I like to do is I will just shorten it. So I'll just put like carnation, I'll do CRNT and then PNK just to shorten it so that it fits on our label a lot better. The HD stands for Starcraft HD and you can label them however you want. You could absolutely fill out the whole thing if you wanted to write all of Starcraft on there. It's really up to you and how you would like to do it. So let's do, uh, let's do dark red. I'm just kind of pulling colors out of my head that I know exist. Um, and for whatever reason, some of them, the one that like you first duplicate will usually stay as a print and cut option. And I don't know why it's very strange. So the first thing that I like to do is I go and I just change everything back to standard print and cut. You can select more than one, but I'm just going to select them one at a time and then standard. Now I'll fill the rest of these in off screen because it's going to take a while and I'm just going to make up names. But what you'll do, say we have everything filled in. What we're going to do is select the entire design. So you want to select all of your boxes, all of your writing, everything. And what you'll do is click the word down here in this lower area under your layers panel. You'll see right next to attach, it is the word flatten. Click on flatten and it's going to look like your boxes disappear. They absolutely do not. They don't disappear at all. They are still there. The reason that they look like they disappear is because they've changed to print and cut and print and cut doesn't show you your cut lines, even though it's going to cut around your design. I know it's a little bit confusing, but that's how it is. So that's how you'll set it up when you're ready to do your print and cut. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill all of these in. So I will come back and we'll have all of them labeled. Once I have everything filled out, you can see all of my squares have names in them. All I simply need to do is select everything that's in those squares. So the easiest way to do that is to just click the uh, left mouse button and drag an entire square around all the parts of your design. That's going to select everything. The next thing that we need to do is to select flatten, which is down here in the lower part of your layers panel. What flatten does is it tells Cricut that this is all going to be print and cut one piece and not to move the words off of the squares. Now it will look like your squares disappeared, but I promise they did not. That's just Cricut's kind of way that they set up print and cut. If it's white, the black lines go away so you can't really see the design. Now obviously I have this extra piece over here if I wanted to make more, but for this tutorial I'm just going to make the one. So I am going to hide this attached piece by using these little eyeballs over here and you just need to click on the very top attach and it will hide everything. The next thing that I do need to do is I do want to hide this as well because we'll come back to that part after we do the print and cut. It's a lot easier just to do these in two separate cuts and two separate basically projects, but I like to have them on the same screen. The other thing that you want to do before you hit make it is to save your project. I save my project every few minutes as I make my project because Cricut Design Space loves to crash and it's best just to make sure that you save your project. So I want to do one final save, which all I have to do is just click save and save again and it's going to save my project and it should come up with a little blue uh, line here at the top 
Now, it will, for some reason, and it does this every once in a while, it's going to ask me that this project has been updated online. Would you like to overwrite the cloud version? I don't know why, because I don't have this saved to the cloud, but whatever. I'm just going to tell it save. I think with the newer update, Cricut Design Space may have just had like a little bit of an issue. I'm not sure why it's been doing this, but it has. And then sometimes it'll actually get stuck. So that's why I just say, make sure that you save this all the time and like constantly save it. Just always hit save. It It is really important. And it'll let you know if you didn't save it because it's got that little asterisk next to it. So as long as that asterisk isn't there, it means you haven't made any changes to your project. So now all we have to do is hide this little guy here, this little slice result down here, because we'll make him on a second project. And then we're just gonna click the word, make it. This portion may take a minute or two because this is still a lot of data for Cricut Design Space to handle. This is also the reason that I tell you to save your project. Sometimes it just gets completely stuck on this screen and you actually have to close Cricut Design Space and reopen. I have a feeling that's what's going to happen here because this has been spinning for quite a while and hasn't opened my project yet. But that's why we save it so that we can just reopen and start over. It did finally load my project, so that is awesome. Super helpful. Now we're going to cut this with Avery sticker paper. I like to use a less expensive sticker paper when doing these types of projects. I just find it a lot less expensive and I cut through my sticker paper when I do these. It's a little easier for me to peel them off that way. The other thing that you want to make sure that you do is if you can make sure you keep your vinyl in order, that way you know, are making sure that you label the correct color. So that's something super important to keep in mind. Now, all I'm going to do is hit continue and it's going to bring up this screen here. Now, currently it's going to tell me no device found here on my Cricut machine. I don't have it turned on. But we are going to send this to our printer while the machine is off. It doesn't matter that your Cricut is off. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. It's super easy. And with this one, we don't need to use any like extra settings because it doesn't really matter if it prints beautifully because they're just labels and why waste extra ink? So what you're going to do is hit send to printer. It's going to take a minute to bring up your um, device here. And this is another thing that has been happening a lot. It says it looks like your device is already connected to a different window. I only have one Cricut window open, so I'm gonna hit cancel and it should work just fine. But what I'm gonna do is right up here, I wanna make sure to select the correct printer. So I have my ET2720. I am gonna leave the bleed on, but I'm just gonna skip system dialog. There's no reason to use it right now because all the system dialog does is really gives us a better print quality and we don't necessarily need to do that for our printing. So all we have to do is simply hit print. Now I do need to put my little stickers into my printer and get them printed out. Then I'll take you guys over to the machine to show you guys how to load them on to your mat. I cut these on the hard card, the heavy cardstock setting. That way I make sure that it cuts all the way through my sticker paper and I have individual die cut stickers. Again, for me, this is just the easiest way that I like to do it. If you like to keep your stickers on your sticker sheet, you'll want to use a much lighter cut setting and you may need to do some test cuts. I did have a hard time and I found washi sheet worked pretty well, but you'll want to just test cut and see what doesn't cut through your sticker paper. I'm going to use my blue cardstock mat for this. And then here is our printed design. You can see that it's all on there. So what you're going to do is line this up with the top of your mat and you want to try to get it as straight as you can looks pretty good and then you want to make sure that it's pressed down really well onto your mat I'll pull my my machine in so you guys can see I'm just using the standard fine point blade that comes with the machine nothing special there all we're gonna do now is load this into the machine now I do have my side light off that's normally on to help the machine I find if it's too bright it doesn't like to read the lines so what I'll do now is hit the Cricut button and what it'll do is it's going to turn on the sensor that's right here in the center of your cradle. It's going to read the lines on the registration like lines here. So it'll turn the light on and it'll kind of pull your mat in and then it'll move. And then it'll pull your mat, you know, it'll go over here and it'll read these lines and it'll pull your mat in to read the bottom line. Once it's done that, it'll cut out all of our little tags.
Now that it's done cutting, you're going to unload it and I'm going to show you how to take this off of your mat because there is a really easy way to do this. Go ahead and flip your mat upside down and then all you're going to do is peel away your stickers and your mat. Now I will say the one thing with the Avery printable labels is they do have a slit in the backing of them to make them easier to peel when you leave them as a whole sheet because they really more so intended these to be like a whole sheet of sticker. So just be aware that you may lose a little bit of your sticker backing when you peel these off. Now they didn't cut perfectly as far as like straightness and that was probably my fault. <clears throat> so as you can see, they're coming off super duper easy. So we're just gonna peel all of them off and done. So we can go ahead and just shake this off real quick and get the last couple that kind of stayed on. Get those off. And now all you have are your little labels. So I'm gonna show you now how to cut out the vinyl and make the little shapes that you need. Now that you've finished cutting out your labels, what you're gonna do is hide this using that little eyeball like I showed you before. Scroll down and find the shape that you want to use for your um, actual vinyl piece, which is this little guy. Now for me, I found it easier to cut them out one at a time because I wanted to make sure I kept them in order. So all I did was I just kept loading and loading the mat with each color. So I'll show you a couple different colors and how I did them and then you'll get the idea. So all we have to do now is just click the word make it. So you'll see here that you've got your little shape right on your mat ready to go. So all we have to do now is click continue and it's connected to our Cricut. The cool thing is you can make this with any of the Cricut machines, your silhouette, your brother scan and cut, your solo, whatever you've got you can absolutely do this. But when making these, you need to make sure that you cut through the backing of the vinyl. And I found that the, again, heavy cardstock setting was best for this. You wanna make sure that that vinyl does stay on your backing. Otherwise you're just gonna have a bunch of sticky pieces of vinyl and they're gonna get all stuck together and it's gonna be a big mess. I'm gonna go ahead and get these all cut out. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that and then how to set up your color swatch. It's super fun and super easy. So I grabbed a few scraps of vinyl that I had, but you can really use full sheets if that's what you have. So what I'm gonna do is line this up and I'm still just gonna use my blue mat. This one's pretty sticky, so it's fine. I'm just gonna put my vinyl on here and I'll pull my machine in so that you guys can see what we're doing. And all I'm gonna do is just load my vinyl into my machine. I'm gonna move these out of the way and simply just hit the go button when it's ready. And it's going to cut out our shape and it's going to cut all the way through the backing so that it's not sticky. So now I'm going to unload and I'll show you what I mean by the cut through the backing. So you can just peel this right off. Now I will say sometimes the little dot likes to stay in, but it'll come right out, just pop it out. And there you go, there is your little sheet. So what I'm gonna do, I don't honestly know which color this is, we'll just call this one yellow, is I'm gonna take my little label, peel the backing off, and then I'm just gonna label my color. So now I know that this is yellow HD, and I can put it on my little key ring. So I wanna cut another color. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on my mat. Again, just simply like this. And now Cricut is a little bit funky right now and I have to select my cut setting every single time. So it's really annoying, but once you do this, you just keep your computer next to you. So then all I do is just load that other color, load it in, and I just cut out the next color and then label it. You're just gonna do this for as many colors as you want or need to. And the nice thing is, this is a great way to add additional colors that you may need for your swatch rings so if they come out with a new color. just go ahead and unload and then you can just peel out your little tag pop out the dot toss the dot away and you're good to go label it and you've got your little swatch ring now again just do this for every color that you have 
Here are the two that I made earlier and what I love about this is that you can really make them as big as you want. You can do fun shapes, whatever you want to do with them. Super duper easy. And then all I did was labeled the back. So you can see like this is Egypt blue from Avery. And then like this one is the all the PSV colors. So soft blue. Now I did leave out black and white because I figured those ones weren't really necessary. They're all the same. But it's a great way to get all the colors and know what colors you want to use. The reason I made these was because I put together a Disney character color chart for you guys. So you can easily find all of your Disney colors. I'll link it down below, but these were super helpful for, helpful for that. And I think they'll be really helpful for you guys at home as well, especially since some of the color swatches are not available in some of the brands. You could do this with HTV as well, but the same thing, you wanna make sure that it cuts through the back of your HTV so that you don't have a sticky part and that your HTV is still on the carrier sheet. And then you can just label them exactly the same way with the Avery stickery labels. These are super easy to make, really simple. And this was just a really quick kind of project, but it did take a while, but it was fun. It was very, very helpful. So I highly recommend doing this if you are in need of knowing what colors you need to use. If you have any questions, please let me know in those comments down below. Be sure to join my Facebook group. I will link that down below for you as well. It's a great place to ask questions, show off your crafts, connect, have fun, meet other crafters. We have a really good time over there. And that way you don't miss out on any of like the really cool stuff that I post as well over there. So be sure to join. I hope you guys learned a few things on how to make your very own swatch rings. Have a wonderful day. And as always, happy crafting. Thank you.